So you might have heard me mention previously the whole uh, Microsoft saying that they didn't see Sony as a competitor. They saw their competitors going forward as Google and Amazon. Well, we've already known about Google Stadia. That's been out for a while. However, now Amazon has also announced that they are jumping in the ring with Luna, Amazon Luna. So Amazon Luna is basically going to be very similar to what we're seeing with Google Stadia. It's going to be very similar to what we're going to be seeing with xCloud, which is basically the Xbox streaming uh, app. And basically the way it works is that you are not going to need a high-powered PC. In the future, what's going to happen is somewhere off who knows where is going to be a really high-level PC able to play 4K games at 120 frames per second or whatever, and that's going to stream to your, uh, that's going to be streaming to your screen, and then you can play it from home. So this is kind of a model moving forward that a lot of people are moving towards, and now Amazon is jumping, throwing their hat into the ring. So what they're trying to do, though, is they're going to be a little bit different than what we've seen with uh, Google Stadia and xCloud. Now, in Google Stadia, you pay for Stadia, and then you get all the games that you have. And then also, with or you can also buy games. So you have whatever's on Game Pass. Oh, sorry, I'm mixing up xCloud and Google Stadia. With Google Stadia, you can basically, they have some free games with the, I don't remember what they call it, Google Plus or whatever, but you have some free games with that. But then you can also buy games off their store and then own those permanently. Now, xCloud, they haven't... I, Maybe they've announced it, I'm not quite sure, but I think they're kind of a similar model. Now, Amazon Luna, there is no purchasing of games whatsoever. It is only their package deal. You can only play the games that they currently have on uh, available. However, what they're going to be doing differently is where Google Stadia has, I think they said something like 1,500 games, and xCloud has something like 200 games. Uh, Luna is going to be offering channels. So currently they only have one channel, that's Luna Plus. However, they will be adding a Ubisoft channel soon. So instead of paying for, for instance, uh, going to the prices, uh, Stadia is currently $9.99 a month, so $10 a month. xCloud is $14.99 a month. Luna is only $5.99 a month. However, you basically, I don't know if you have to pay individually for the channels or if you pay for one thing and can select a certain number of channels. But by doing this, you can basically subscribe to games that interest you. So, for example, if you enjoy platformers, then maybe there's a platforming channel. There's just a bunch of platformers on there. So then you're not having to pay for a thousand games, you know, and including fighting games, which you're never going to play. You can only pay for a hundred games, which are all games in the genre that you're interested in. So that's kind of a very interesting thing that nobody else has been doing. And it'll be interesting to see if, if they kind of, uh, we see other people jumping into this as we go. Uh, currently, they only have 50 games on their main channel, and there's only about 50 games on the Ubisoft channel. Uh, so unfortunately, that is, there's not a huge variety as of yet, but there's definitely some growth there. Uh, what's also interesting about it is if you get their official controller, which is going to be $49.99 or $50, what you can do is normally, if I'm using, like, say, xCloud, I attach the controller to my phone using Bluetooth, and then the controller will go into my phone, and then my phone will contact the servers, and then it will come back. Now, with Luna, if you have the controller, the controller will contact the servers directly as long as it has uh, access to your Wi-Fi connection. So basically, you're cutting out that middleman, that Bluetooth middleman of talking from the controller to the phone, and you're just talking directly to the server. So this is going to help with latency a little bit and allow you to have a slightly faster... Uh, work speed basically on your game. So that, that's a really, really cool thing. The other thing that's really cool about it is that it is not a traditional app. It is actually uh, going to use a progressive web app. And what that means is that actually, whereas say like if I have a game, normally you have a little app icon, the way Luna's gonna work is it's actually just gonna open up a browser and you're gonna be playing a game on the web page basically through a browser. And by doing this, they can bypass the Apple Store. Because they can just you can just access your page directly from the internet using your web browser. So they are bypassing the Apple Store, and they are not having to deal with any of the stuff that Epic has to deal with. And I don't really think Apple can really do anything other than, quite frankly, banning their website from their browser. So uh, that would definitely be a huge issue. 
So they've basically taken Epic's problem and fixed it for them. Uh, so maybe Epic will adopt that in the future. We're not quite sure. Uh, but since we're already on the topic of Amazon, there is one other thing in the Amazon news that I'm going to cover, and that is if you have pre-ordered your PlayStation 5 or Xbox X Series, uh, it looks like PlayStation will go up for a second round of pre-orders. Xbox, it looks like they're done, so if you didn't get it, you just have to wait for the first day. However, Amazon is now releasing emails telling people that their Amazon pre-orders of the Xbox uh, Series X and the PlayStation 5 may not arrive on time. And what's even more alarming is they are not telling people when it may arrive. So even though you pre-ordered your Xbox Series X or your PlayStation 5, you might not get it on release day. You might actually end up having to wait up to a couple weeks to actually get it. We're not quite sure right now. Uh, but obviously that's causing a lot of people's distress, considering that the whole purpose of pre-ordering it is having it day one. And if I pre-order it and it doesn't show up, for a couple of weeks and I could have walked into a store and bought it before that, that is going to be very, very distressing. Uh, on a personal note, I know how that feels when Final Fantasy VII Remake came out. I pre-ordered it, but my copy had to be sent to the States and then it had to be sent from the States to here. So I ended up getting it about a month after release. <laughs> so I definitely feel those people's pain. I pay for Netflix and I pay for HBO Go. Um, and we ended up dropping cable because of it. So actually, we ended up spending less on those two things than we do on cable. So yeah, I could definitely, I mean, I, I already kind of do that with, with videos. But also, like for instance, with the uh, Xbox Game Pass. Now, this isn't streaming, but with the Game Pass, you pay what? Like I said, $15 a month, basically. Uh, whereas with the PlayStation 4, a new game, you're going to be spending about $70. So if I can finish a game every four months, I'm actually spending less on something like uh, Game Pass. So, for instance, uh, if you had, say, Luna or something like that, and I'm paying five dollars or yeah, five dollars a month, you know, if uh, yeah, I, I mean, if it has games that I want on it, absolutely. I mean, I, you'd probably end up saving money in the long run, to be honest. It it does seem kind of counterintuitive. You're thinking like, oh, I'm paying every month as opposed to only choosing when I pay. But if you're the kind of person who's consistently playing. I definitely see that as, as a definitely a good option. My only concern would be latency uh, because when I'm playing on a local system, obviously there's no lag. It's very smooth. Uh, my internet currently is not that good. As 5G starts to become more common, maybe that can kind of pick up the slack. But then at the same time, as it becomes more common, you're going to have more users on it. And that's going to start eating up the bandwidth. So... I'm definitely open to the idea, but I'll have to wait and see how it works. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, Taiwanese news, actually. It is the GeForce Now's release in Taiwan, in Kaohsiung. Um, I was really excited when xCloud was released and GeForce Now was released. Um, and, I mean, now Adam, Adam talked about Amazon Luna. Hopefully, Amazon Luna launches in Taiwan as well. That would be great. Because uh, a big problem with a lot of these services is that they launch in America, they launch in typically the Western markets first, which is strange to me because uh, cell phones and cell phone gaming are such a big thing in Asia. In general, you'd figure they would launch here, and not to mention, I mean, we have affordable uh, 4G internet and even cheaper 5G internet. People have proven uh, Taiwan's 5G plans, unlimited 5G plans, are 10 US dollars cheaper than uh, American 5G plans. So uh, GeForce Now has launched in Taiwan. However, it is unfortunately only available with one cell phone provider or one ISP, which is uh, in English is called Taiwan Big Brother or Taiwan Tagata. Uh, and they are not the fastest internet provider by any means, and not even the biggest ones. Uh, which I find very, very strange. I complained about this to Adam because uh, I don't have as many opportunities needs to game. So for me, uh, for gaming on my phone somewhere, like, I mean, I'd love to play Gears uh, of War, Gears Tactics for 20 minutes somewhere if I'm waiting between classes. And to me, that sounds like perfect sort of increase my gaming exposure without having to lug around uh, my huge desktop PC or my Nintendo Switch with me, uh, which is sort of 
more up, I mean the switch small I'll give it to you but it's still obtrusive if you're sitting in an office or you're sitting in a classroom or waiting outside a classroom or waiting somewhere when you pull out a switch and people just sort of notice it but if you're just using your phone nobody's gonna be like what is that guy doing over there um, so GeForce is now available so the problem is in, in what I don't like in Taiwan I mean this goes back to the idea of exclusives as well is that you have to use this company if you want to use GeForce now in Taiwan uh, GeForce now I should have said this earlier is a streaming platform uh, you it's you yeah, there's a free option I think you only get to play 30 minutes a day uh, you get to pay money as well and if you pay money it's unlimited um, they had a somewhat of a good start they started with loads of games but they had also a rocky start uh, in the sense that they started with loads of games but people like hey we didn't give you authority to have this game on your server so loads of games got removed from the catalog there's still quite a lot available now uh, I'm hoping for more stuff to be available in the future and it's something and I, and I really hope they expand it to the other four or three two other major companies in Taiwan so if you're a Taiwanese gamer and if you're a Taiwan, da, Taiwan Dagada subscriber please keep an eye out for that uh, if you're listening or you're watching it later, uh, please drop us an email at middleagedgaming2020 at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about GeForce Now in Taiwan. I actually have to ask some other people, maybe they know it, and I'll hopefully report about it again in the future. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's great, the news that we finally have it available now in Taiwan. We tend to get things really, really slow. Uh, HBO, I was waiting for HBO Go for over a year. They had commercials on TV. And, but it was always in Thailand, and it was never in Taiwan. And it's like, oh, come on, guys. So uh, the fact that we we're finally getting something, I think, is actually really great. Um, so we're really happy about that. Uh, now, I, I probably won't be using GeForce myself, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. <laughs>